Star Citizen has just unveiled some massive ship updates. But before we get onto that, I want to talk quickly about Alpha 3.24.1 and the server meshing playtests. So Alpha 3.24.1 is a patch that's currently on the open PTU. It's got a load more fixes in it, solving a ton of extra stuff, including people not being able to escape prison and issues with the medical gun, bed logging issues, uh, the Atlas, that, that exosuit has even more fixes with its camera and decals and moving vehicles with its tractor beam, that should all work now. I am expecting this patch to go live later today personally for the weekend and the Atlas exosuit to be on sale as well. Don't know that for sure, could be next week for example, but um, I think that the ATLS stands for All Terrain Loading System for the Atlas, but what do you think? Could they sell combat versions of this at the same time? Maybe, but Alpha 3.24.1 looks like it's release candidate material to me. We'll, we'll hopefully have that later today because there's only a certain amount of stuff they can do with hotfixes for 3.24 and yeah, they, they'll want to push this out ASAP. CIG have also been testing server meshing on the tech preview build, which was, I believe, open to everyone. This ranged from four servers meshed together with 350 players all the way up to six servers meshed together with a thousand players per shard. That round of tests has now ended, but expect more again soon. Let's take a look at some of these ship updates. So we've got a range of things from the Zeus Mark IIs, new MFDs, and, and all of that stuff's coming in Alpha 3.24.2, so a patch between now and 4.0 before the end of the year. But CIG have also announced a load of upcoming ship and vehicle loadout changes, which are going to really, really affect how players see certain ships, use certain ships. There's a change from tankiness to redundancy, and, and we'll talk about it in a minute. So let's take a look at the Inside Star Citizen, which talked about Alpha 3.24.2 and the Zeus. So the Zeus Mark II is almost complete, at least the CL and ES variants. These are both coming in that 3.24.2 patch later in the year, either for CitizenCon in October or the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November, most likely. It's a version two of an old ship that exists in law, but sort of reimagined. It was fully built out by the Montreal Turbulent Vehicle Team in around a year. It pushes the RSI brand forward in terms of what technology is available. They are planned to be a sort of second tier stepping stone ship. So a ship that you naturally go to after your starter ship. Oh, I want to maybe have a multi-crew. Maybe I want to do a bit more. It supports up to three crew all in the cockpit, but it's totally usable solo. They look great. It looks like an arrowhead. Move over Anvil Arrow, because obviously it's just a bigger looking Anvil Arrow in a lot of ways, um, but from a different manufacturer. Weapons wise, the pilot has access to twin size four guns. Side seats have access to the remote turrets. Uh, the cockpit is where three crew will be controlling the ship, but there's a uh, room for someone to run around and do engineering and that sort of stuff. There's quite a lot crammed in that cockpit though. Um, if you move from that cockpit, towards the uh, next area of the ship. You sort of like move into the neck and airlock engineering area. This area has been opened up during development. They sort of removed a door and bulkhead. There's a ladder exit here as well. Docking collar, smaller component access, all easily accessible from this section. There's then, if you move towards the rear of the ship, a hallway section, which gives you access to a kitchen and eating area on one side and then on the other side of the hallway there's a habitation area with beds for the crew washroom and storage at the rear of the ship is the cargo and larger ship component access there's also a rear ramp for loading and unloading as well now the es version is the exploration variant it's got modest cargo larger quantum and hydrogen fuel tank um, it's got a better radar and um, sort of larger living area. The CL is the cargo variant. It's got a large cargo. Um, it goes from having 32 SU of cargo to 128, but at the expense of other facilities, like a more compact living quarters um, and a smaller kitchen. Uh, the components are clustered together, which might not be ideal. The CL has a tract beam and larger thrusters, though. There is a sort of blue trim on the floor marking where cargo will lock. And there's going to be more RSI ships coming next year as well. 
What I found really exciting in the Inside Star Citizen was the new MFDs, the multi-function displays that are also coming in 3.24.2. So the common MFDs, hardened UI on your ships, it's old. It has issues. It's not ergonomic and has a load of unused stuff. So they've made a much more streamlined, better looking set of MFDs. These. They've been building sort of like Squadron 42 and now they're bringing them over. There are five visual styles with this release. Aegis, sort of blue, high-tech, sleek military looking. Anvil, green, F-16 inspired, modern military. Drake, orange, retro, a CRT old monitor vibe. Argo, industrial, sort of orange and yellow looking. And there's a generic one that they use for all other manufacturers at the moment. Uh, there are nine different views for the MFDs as well, sort of nine different modes and, and things that you might want to have on your MFDs. The self-status one. This has critical info based on your operator mode. Ammo when you're in combat and SCM mode. Uh, fuel in quantum. Turrets have their own version. It's sort of super streamlined and links into other features showing gimbals and weapon groups, stuff like that. So really nice thing that you'll probably want to have on your MFDs all the time. There's also target status. The info that you know about your target, health, emissions, name, faction, speed. You've got weapon config, um, which is entirely new. Uh, weapon groupings allow you to sort of set it up into four groups and a click of a button. Shields, that controls each of the faces of your shield and between one and four based on what type of shield you have. It's basically the same as we had before. Scanning and communications. Scanning is now on the MFD rather than on the HUD. This gives deeper info about the target if you scan them. Power management. It's a lot more simple um, than like an engineering terminal, but it's tied into the resource network. It allows you to tweak your emissions power, track output. It also shows power status. There's also a diagnostics view. This shows status errors were and damage to components. Uh, configuration screen. This has a ton of modes and options that were previously in the menu or obscured and allows you to have them at your fingertips diegetically. This allows you to um, change things like like IFCS modes and um, different options for that. Your pips, staggered fire, toggle UI elements, allowing you to basically be in control of what's on your HUD. And the HUD has also been cleaned up at a glance, so you'll see what you want in the areas that you're looking with less irrelevant info in the way. The radar has been made to look more diegetic too, it looks awesome, all of this this updates. It's going to be amazing for videos and screenshots, but just generally the feel and look of Star Citizen, they, they needed this. And uh, I want to say a big shout out to Haskaha, my favorite screen shooter. Um, he uh, is likely to be making amazing stuff, uh, especially now with this even, even more amazing. Check out their stuff in my links below. Uh, they also said in Inside Star Citizen, next time they're going to be talking about the uh, engineering stuff and resource network coming in Alpha 4.0. I'm very excited for that. Something else that's going to be turning up between now and Alpha 4.0 is the upcoming ship and vehicle loadout changes they announced. So CIG said, as part of the ongoing development of vehicle systems, particularly with resource network and engineering gameplay on the horizon, we've taken the opportunity to look across all our current vehicles in game and revisit some of them in terms of both default item size and quantity. Reviewing both player feedback as well as analytics on usage and performance, it was clear that some ships and vehicles were underperforming and needed adjustment. Some vehicles were adjusted to bring them in line with others in their class to ensure competitiveness, and some were adjusted because they simply had an abundance of power output that wasn't necessary anymore. You may have noticed in recent vehicle promotions and releases that we've strayed away from the typical max 1 to 2 power plants and coolers and shield generators to actually higher numbers such as the Zeus and Retaliator having 4 to 6 shield generators for example. And these updates will roll out similar changes across other ships and vehicles. In addition to the changes below, you can also expect handling and health changes to some vehicles to make sure they don't stray too far from their intended design behavior. The Redeemer, for example, will get a buff in flight handling to compensate for the reduced shields and weaponry. So we'll come to this in a second because I think a lot of people at a glance are going to be very annoyed if they have a Redeemer. But we don't really have enough info to to talk about it. I, I, we'll dig into it a lot more in a future video as we need more variance customization, balance the new engineering gameplay and a load of other stuff to come online to see how ships stack up properly. And a lot of the updates to here are for industrial motor cruise ships. And I expect lots more changes coming. And as they said, they're, they're expanding stuff out so um, that they're changing ships to have a lot more smaller components in a lot of situations. But yeah, th th there are some dedicated combat ships in this 
change two at the moment. And like the, the Buccaneer, it has one size, one shield. That is paper thin now. Um, it was paper thin before, it's now super paper thin. Um, yeah, and then we've got like the Mercury Star Runner. It's gonna have one size three shield. That's gonna be pretty tanky. The Valkyrie has four size twos now. That redundancy may be very useful for engineering gameplay, but let's talk about the Redeemer. The Redeemer used to have two size threes, which is a huge amount of shield health. Now it's got six size twos. So an example, a couple of size three shields might be like 200,000 shield health and six size twos combined might be about 40,000 40, shield health. So that's a lot of redundancy, but not much effective shield health. Shields might be hugely reworked, so bear that in mind. And it might be beneficial to have redundancy over amount of shield health. But size three shields are a magnitude better. It looks like a huge nerf at first glance. And yeah, as I said, armor, hull health, that's also a thing. And maybe they want to move a bit towards that as well. The other thing with the Redeemer is manned turrets. They were size five. They're now going down to two size fours each. It's going to upset a lot of Redeemer owners, as I said. Uh, anyway, I'll link the changes below. We'll dig into it in another video. We don't have enough information yet about exactly the sweeping changes they're going to make to other ships and how that's all going to balance out. And maybe the effective health of shields might not be that different between um, two size threes and six size twos eventually. I vaguely remember them saying that they wanted a size increase to be four times more effective than the last, but we'll have to wait and see. CIG need to talk a lot about, more about balance, and, and I think a lot of that will be coming with Alpha 4.0 when they introduce engineering. Boom! That's it for your updates today. As I said, some pretty big changes there, and I expect more coming um, between now and 4.0 and 4.0 sort of representing a, a big change to how ships operate because of engineering, but um, obviously updates to master modes and stuff like that as well. When do you think we're going to see Alpha 3.24.1? Do you think that's going to be released later today or for the weekend or next week? And are you expecting those Titan suits, those Argo Atlases to be on sale at the same time? Alpha 3.24.2, when do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that's going to be soon? Do you think that's going to be with CitizenCon or the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo? I do really like the look of the juice, but I'm really excited for those MFD updates. And what else could they have in 3.24.2? Uh, what do you think of those balance and components changes that Cloud and Pyram have basically been talking about? Effectively, from what I can tell, they want more redundancy, smaller shields, um, small, smaller systems, and lots more of them for the most part. But that's, it depends on the ship and it's dependent on the system. And um, what do you think about that at the moment? And what would you like to see? Whatever your thoughts or questions, please chuck them in the comments below. What's in the box? That is what Pandora asked. She was told not to open that box, but she did. The internet is like Pandora's box, full of the chaos of the world. And Pandora basically opened an email attachment asking to help a millionaire prince move money around. Bam! It was Medusa all along. You've turned to stone. Foolish! You should know your Greek mythology. And what's not foolish is NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. NordVPN is potentially one of the greatest Greek mythological heroes. It helps protect you from the terrors of the internet, helping you be more secure and private, while also giving you great accessibility. You can use my links down below to get NordVPN cheap. September! We've got a giveaway! Every month we have a ship giveaway and this month is no different. We're giving away five ships this month. Actually, that is a bit different. That's four more than normal. We're going to give each of them to a different winner. We've got a Nomad, an X1, a Sulen, a Mustang Alpha and a 100i. They all come with access to the game and lifetime insurance. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning any of those is comment on any of my videos made during the month on YouTube. I want to say a massive thank you to all our patrons and channel members. Your support allows us to make daily content. You are the best and you should consider joining them by clicking the join button under my videos. It goes a long way in helping us as does commenting, sharing videos, liking all of that jazz. You do not have to chuck money at us, but if you want to, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. Thanks for watching and have a great September.